Thank you, worship team. Good morning, church. It's very good to see you all this morning in uh, such a, another, another week of pretty great weather. Spring is officially here. I couldn't be more pleased, and I'm sure based on some of the smiling faces I see this morning, you are also pleased as well. Um, no, no offense if you love winter, but I was ready for it to be done. So, Well, folks, we're glad to have you here. We're just going to skim through some uh, announcements in your bulletin. So if you have your bulletin, you can open it up there, and we're going to take a jaunt through it. You can see some of our upcoming services listed there. Of course, we have a leadership forum this morning uh, following our service uh, here at 1230 and, of course, next week as well. But we have a rising tide celebration of prayer and worship at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. That's happening on the 31st. That's next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Make sure you plan to be there for a great time of uh, interdenominational, intergenerational celebration in prayer. So it's going to be a fantastic time to come together, and uh, please come check that out. You can see a list of our weekly activities happening there as well. But uh, some other events coming up, we have the 2019 Marriage Retreat, which is just around the corner, May 17th to the 19th. You can contact Tim and Francis uh, if you want some more info about that. Mega Sports Camp is coming up August 5th to the 9th from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. This is open to all children from ages 5 up to grade 5. Uh, we are partnering with First Baptist Church for that event, and it's going to be a fantastic time together. Uh, please pray for that as the planning takes place. Pre-registration will be open uh, within the next month. Honduras Mission Trip is coming up April 12th to the 28th. If you are looking to give to that, make sure uh, in whatever way you give that you mark it as Honduras Mission so that we make sure it gets to the right spot. And uh, please be in prayer for that 10th year anniversary trip that's coming up. There's a birthday celebration for Diane Jones on March 24th at Lower Coverdale from 2 to 4 p.m. Make sure to come out and wish her a happy birthday there for her 70th birthday. The Daryl and Laura Lee Buston WMS meeting will be held March 28th at 2 p.m. in the parlor. And we want to pass along our condolences to the family of Marianne Porter uh, on her passing last week. If you had a chance to be, and I know some of you were at, our, at the uh, celebration service of her life this past week, it was a wonderful service. Lots of great memories were shared. Please be in prayer for that whole family, especially her granddaughter, Michaela. One more announcement we have that is not in your bulletin. Uh, it is that time of year where we are uh, going to be uh, collecting names for graduates. So if you are a university or college graduate associated with our church, or you know of someone who is, who is a part of our congregation um, and associated with our church that you would like to have recognized here in our, in our church, then please make sure to let us know. Uh, you can start letting us know now. You can contact me. This is for university and college uh, graduates especially, as we're going to be recognizing them a little bit earlier than we do our high High school graduates, so please let me know uh, as soon as you get a chance. I'd like to invite the Evangelism Committee forward. They have a brief announcement to share about a new outreach opportunity that we have coming up, and uh, I'd like to invite them forward now at this time to tell us a little bit more about that and how you can give a hand in making sure that this outreach is a success. Yes, good morning. Um, Terrence is our chairman for Evangelism Committee, and he and Cody and the, the committee, and Dave, you're here too. Uh, we, uh, we have made uh, another uh, invitation, and this is for Easter. We did a similar thing in, at Christmas time, and we're looking for volunteers to help deliver 1,000 of these next weekend. So if you can help do that, would you give me a call? The, invite, the announcement is in the bottom of your book bulletin with my phone number and because we we're preparing them this Wednesday you're going to see the date this Wednesday uh, in the memorial room we will be taking the invitation and and using a blue dot to put a chocolate on here and uh, we want if you come we can't eat all the chocolates but we're going to do that on Wednesday we're hoping that uh, this will be done mainly by our international fellowship after our Wednesday meeting, but if you can join us and help us, it will be many hands will make light work. So uh, please contact me if you can come um, on Friday night or Saturday, because if, unless you have a key to the church, uh, we, we will need to be someone of us here to distribute and give you invitations and a map to go out around. And I don't know if you brought the map, but we'll get them. <laughs> we'll, we'll we have a week, two-week period. 
We start next weekend. Yeah, we start next week, okay? And apparently uh, you can still deliver any time the following week, but we'll start Friday night. And thank you for your help to in volunteering because Easter is such a wonderful time and we want to invite people to come celebrate with us. Thank you. It is an easy opportunity to get involved. If you're looking for a way to get involved, young or old, to come and, and, and uh, share the gospel in a very simple way through just a handing out of a flyer. Sometimes it's just in a mailbox. Sometimes it might be to someone directly. But it's an easy way to, uh, to share the gospel and to connect them to our church and, and, of course, to Jesus Christ, as that is the ultimate goal. So if you're interested in that, please contact. We'd love to have your help for that. At this time, I'd like to ask Pastor Doran and Tassin and Iman to come forward to share with us our call to worship and opening prayer. Thank you, Cody. <clears throat> Well, good morning, church. So um, today um, we're going to do the call to worship. Uh, and uh, it's not unusual for us to do this as a multicultural team. But today I did not invite these folks here just for the call to worship. Um, I invited them because this is a special opportunity to share something with you. So uh, Tahsin and uh, Iman are going to leave soon. They uh, decided to move to Windsor, Ontario. Not because they didn't uh, accommodate here, not because they uh, feel like they don't belong here, not because they failed to, to settle down here, but because they have family uh, there. They have family in Detroit, am I right? Uh, close to the Michigan, uh, close to, to uh, that place, and it'll be easier for them to communicate with, uh, with uh, their family and to get in touch with their family. And I just um, I want to say a few words. We celebrated them um, um, about a week before and um, um, we wanted to share these news with, uh, with you as well. And I want to tell them a few words about what they meant for our little fellowship. So Tahsin and Iman, I uh, never forgot that first uh, evening when you came to our fellowship. Um, I never forgot the first evening when you led the Bible study and I was amazed about the same common language that uh, uh, we spoke there. And that language uh, was not English, that language was Christianese, that language was the word, uh, the word of God. And um, um, that was the moment when um, what it was uh, more like a theory in my mind became so real. The kingdom of God is real. And the kingdom of God is made up of people from many nations, many tribes, and many languages. Um, you were a blessing for us, for all of us. And I speak on behalf of the, of the whole group, multicultural group. And I like to believe that I speak on behalf of the whole church. You were such a blessing for us. And um, I do not see this as uh, from you as uh, leaving the church behind or um, abandoning us. But I see this more like... Um, commissioning you to be our missionaries for that area. And um, um, even though physically we will not be with you anymore, we will be with you in the spirit. And I would like to offer you this little gift on behalf of our multicultural fellowship. It is a picture that we took uh, that night uh, at the restaurant. And um, I hope you will 
put it on the right place and um, you will um, remember of us. Um, thank you so much, folks, and I really hope that um, you will find your way there. And um, remember, we will come for you. And you have a place here anytime, so whenever you want to come back and to just um, um, visit us, you're more than welcome. Taksin will read the Bible for us in uh, English. Uh, Iman will read the Bible in Arabic, and uh, I will pray. Good morning, Church. With a broken heart, uh, we say goodbye. But thank God for everything. Thank for this uh, real, amazing uh, family church here. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Pastor Cody, Pastor uh, Dorin, and uh, Pastor Greg. Uh, and uh, we are blessing uh, here. Uh, please pray for us. Psalm 84, 10, 12. One day in your temple is better than thousand. I would rather serve in your house than live in the homes of the weak. Our Lord and our God, you are like sun and also shield. You treat us with uh, kindness to those who live right, Lord God, all-powerful. You bless everyone who trusts you. Amen. Good morning. لأن يوما واحدا في ديارك خير من ألف اخترت الوقوف على العتبة في البيت إلهي على السكن في خيام الأشرار لأن الرب الله شمس ومجن الرب يعطي رحمة ومجدا لا يمنع خيرا عن السالكين بالكمال يا رب الجنود طوبى للإنسان المتكل عليك آمين Lord, we're so thankful for today, Lord. We're so thankful for all the good gifts that you gave us and you continue to give us, Lord. And Lord, I can't stop being amazed, Lord. What a wonderful thing the kingdom of God is. Lord, I want to thank you in particular today for Tahsin, Iman, and their family, Lord. Lord, we probably never experienced the kingdom of God in such a practical way than having Tahsin, Iman, and their family in our midst, Lord. Lord, I... I pray that you would um, bless them and you would um, um, be with them there. You would um, heal our sorrow for um, separating and for... for um, and Lord, I just pray, Lord, that uh, you would give us a chance to see them again, here or there, or we know that uh, we will be part of that big crowd in heaven, worshiping you, Lord. But we ask, Lord, that uh, you would give us the chance to, to see again here in this world. Lord, I pray now that um, you would bless our service today. A day in your house is better than a thousand day, days um, away. And today, Lord, we are in your house. And today, Lord, we are in your house and um, we need to discuss important things, Lord. And Lord, I pray for wisdom from above. I pray for your Holy Spirit to lead the discussions. 
And uh, Lord, I pray for a new and fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit here in, in the service uh, today, Lord. Because this is not about anything. This is about you. This is about us worshiping you, Lord. And Lord, we ask a special touch of your spirit and we ask, Lord, that you would be the one to um, lead our service and everything that we do here today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, family. I pray that you've come prepared to worship our Savior, who is so worthy. Amen? Let's raise the roof this morning. It's a special day for us as a team. Um, I've told them all many times that we're looking forward to the worship team in heaven. This might be our last time as a team on stage, but um, we will be the greatest worship team in glory forever and ever, and that's going to be glorious. I want to say a, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. These guys are my family, and they have been faithful and encouraging and with me every step of the way and put up with my high maintenance at times and changing my mind and changing things on stage when you guys probably never knew. And uh, God is good. A huge congrats to Nathan and Maggie who graduate and go on to bigger and better things. So you guys, these guys, I've known, I've known Maggie since she was a baby. I held her in my arms when we arrived at Gary Baptist and her family is our family. And uh, so thankful that she, she decided to make Highfield her home these past four years. And they've been incredible, incredible blessing to us. And uh, to the rest of you, you know, you, know, you know how I feel. My sister, as many of you know, went through a battle of cancer a year and a half ago. The same week she was diagnosed, her friend was. This week her friend went to glory, and my sister celebrates full recovery. I needed some words that my sister sent to me this week. And here's what she said. She said, it makes me stop and reflect and wonder why it was me that God had stay. God has more for me to do right now. I now live with the keen awareness of how quickly life could and will pass. She said, Rachel, love hard, serve faithfully, and give much. She said, I think my biggest change from having cancer is that I never want to miss an opportunity to tell someone they are loved and to give them an encouraging word. Remember the saying, no one will remember what you did, but everyone will remember how you made them feel. The most influential people in our lives are the ones who loved us when we are most unlovable. It's easy to love those that give us a lot of support and encouragement, but God calls us deeper to love because he is our living hope. Amen? We stand in that hope today. Would you stand with us?
I'm going to invite the children to come down front as you're seated. Uh, all the children that are in attendance this morning, can you guys come on down front here? And you can sit right along the stage here anywhere. Yeah. It's great to see you guys. So good to have you. Wow. Hi, guys. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Hi. Do you guys... Do you guys know over here on this side of the church, right here, there's this vase, and we have some pretty flowers in there. Do you guys know what kind of flowers those are? What kind of flowers? Um, they're like the poppies. Well, they're close to a poppy because they're red, but they're actually not quite a poppy. Do you know what kind of flower it is? Rose? They are roses. That is right. And you know what? Sometimes people will say, bloom. Does a rose bloom? 
Yeah. The bloom means that they come out like that, like a rose. They can get very beautiful. And they can often smell the fragrance of them. They say, bloom where you're planted. Hmm. That's interesting. Bloom where you're planted. What do you think that means, to bloom where you're planted? Do you know? Well, when a rose blooms, do you think it's really pretty? And it's fragrant? So when it's planted in the right place and it has the opportunity to be the best that it can be, that's what it means when somebody looks at you and says, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, bloom where you're planted. In other words, be the very best you can be wherever it is that you're planted or where you are. And that's what we're all called to do, isn't it? Is to bloom where we're planted. Do you know the other thing about a rose that's really interesting? The rose here is not the rose of Sharon. But Jesus was called the rose of Sharon. And you know what's interesting about Jesus as the rose of Sharon? Jesus actually died and went into the grave. It was like the rose died and fell down. But then what happened? Jesus came back to life at the resurrection. And he again became the beautiful rose of Sharon, which allows us to realize that we can know God because Jesus is our Savior. And he did exactly what he needed to do to be the person that he needed to be so that we could be saved. That's pretty neat, isn't it? So can you guys all do this for me? You're going to try to bloom where you're planted? You're going to try to be the very best you can be when you're at school or when you're at home or when you're at church? Huh? I hope so. Anybody? Nobody? Mm, okay. All right. Can you guys do this for me? Put your hands out like this. Everybody put your hands like this. Ready? Watch me. Ready? And now do this. Ready? Now bow your heads. And we're going to ask Pastor Cody to come pray for us. Just keep your hands folded together for a minute. Break. We're going to pray. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for that symbol of you being the rose. And Lord, as Easter is uh, about a month away, Lord, we do start to prepare our hearts and our minds for what that means. Lord, we thank you for that sacrifice of your son. Lord, we just pray for these children now that as they go downstairs, they will learn about your love that was poured out on that cross. And Lord, because of what you did for us, Lord, we offer you now these gifts as these offerings are taking up this morning. And we just pray that you'll use these gifts to bring glory to your name and to bring more closer to you, to knowing who you are and being saved by you. We pray for all of these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.
Am I powered? There we go. I'm powered. Well, I think they've got out before I could say anything. But thank you to the Briggs family and uh, all their kids for playing for us this morning. And thank you, Rachel and team, for playing for us this morning. Did you enjoy that? Wasn't that wonderful worship time together today? I'll tell you. And uh, Taksin and Iman, uh, I don't see you. Wave. Where are you? Oh, you're up there. Yes, I should know you're in the balcony. Uh, we will miss you. And most importantly, well, no, I mean, most importantly, we will miss you. But I will also miss my baklava. Okay? And so I don't know. if uh, Sometime before you leave, maybe I can get some more. Does, do you know what baklava is? Uh, Whoo! Iman makes some beautiful baklava, and she gives it to me every so often, and I'm going to miss that. That's for sure. It's nice to have you folks here. God bless you. Uh, folks, many of you know that uh, our time here at Highfield has come to a completion. Rachel and I and our ministry with you uh, has come to a completion. And I want you to know that uh, we are praying for you. And uh, we covet your prayers. Uh, these are not easy transitions. Nobody looks forward to the day where we make shift changes and transitions like this. And so we ask that you would continue to pray for us. We do not know yet what God is calling us to. We are prayerfully asking him what he's going to do. We would ask you that you would pray for us in that way as well. And we will pray for you because we know with the forums that are happening and the unknown uh, kind of future that we're not exactly sure what is taking place at Highfield either. And so we're praying for you. And you remember your leadership and pray for them. The deacons of this church have a passion for God and for you. And so you pray for them, that, you, that God would give them guidance, and, uh, and you come with your thoughts and ideas and work together to be able to do the very best of what God wants you to do in the future. That is our prayer for you. I'm going to invite you to stand this morning as I read from a passage of Scripture. It's not too long, but I think sometimes it's nice for us to stand together, and that way I can keep you nice and awake. <laughs> Luke chapter 23, beginning to read at, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 5, it says this, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, that was the apostles when they came to the empty sepulcher, they said to them, that was the two men in shining garments, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Thank you. You may be seated. God always adds a blessing to the reading of his word, and, and we know that Easter is not too far along from coming. And I'm not preaching an Easter message this morning, but it is good for our minds to start thinking about what's coming up the next little while and celebrate that together. But what I am going to talk a little bit about this morning is remembering his words. There are many words that Jesus spoke during his life of ministry, many lessons that he taught, many things that he showed, and even our own scriptures do not declare or do not copy every word that Jesus ever spoke. There are many things that Jesus spoke. But I would like to think that there's a few things that are really mandatory, things that are really significant that we should remember about what God spoke through the person of Christ. And so I call them remembering his words of love. And we'll simply use that little acrostic. And I want to thank Rachel, who I didn't know was going to share the story about her sister and how the importance is, is that greater than anything else, we demonstrate love towards one another. First of all, love gives us a lesson. Paul Cedar, a pastor, uh, said this, his most painful experiences have been when he, he's had a problem and no one loved him enough to actually tell him about it. When he had a problem and nobody actually loved him enough to tell him about it. Love actually speaks the truth. Love actually comes alongside and helps somebody when they're in error. Love actually steps out and gives a lesson. In fact, if you were to ask my children, they would probably tell you that if that is the definition of love, then I must love them a lot. Because I give them all kinds of lessons. I help them how to change a tire. I tell them what's the best way to do their banking. I help them to know how to read the scriptures. I even tell them what the best way is to peel a potato. I'm a kind of dad that just loves to give lots of lessons. And the reason is, is because I want them to learn from my mistakes. 
I want them to be better people than they were if they were just on their own. My greatest desire is that the motivation of my instruction in any way would be something that would provide for them the opportunity to become better than, quicker than, they could have without the opportunity or instruction. Maybe it's best to say it this way. How many of you have ever heard of a gentleman named Alexander von Humboldt? He taught André Dumas. Do you know who the, the French chemist, Louis Jacques Thenard? Because his assistant was Mr. Dumas. What is the significance of Jean-Baptiste André Dumas? Well, he was a French chemist. And he did a lot of stuff with regards to organic chemistry. And you say, what's the big deal? Well, it was this individual who taught Louis Pasteur. And most of us know that Louis Pasteur has invented the process of, which is now known by his name, of pasteurization, which allows us to drink milk and wine, but not for Baptists, uh, milk and wine, without being contaminated, and much health came out of that. But Louis Pasteur didn't just do that. He also discovered vaccines to prevent diseases like cholera, anthrax, wine, erysipelas. Pasteur established the immun immunology branch of science, and he discovered a vaccine against rabies. Why is this all significant? Because we learn from those who came before us. Pasteur was a product of all the people who had been before him. And his discoveries, why they came in his lifetime, were very much a part of everything else. And Louis Pasteur, was a, he was a patriot. He loved God and country, and part of his greatest motivation to do the work that he was doing was his love for God and country. He had a deep love for the people around him. And I tend to think that we learn from the people that came before us. I can't go through them all because there's far too many, but we learn from Pastor Demon. And Pastor Carter, from Dr. Knowles, and Pastor Steeper, from our beloved interim minister, John Weiler, and from Pastor Cormier, and I hope maybe just a little bit from myself as well. Love gives us lessons, and Jesus gives us a greatest lesson that he describes to us in the coming of his kingdom is a warning. And the warning is found in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. It says this, And as ye go preaching, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and whoever shall not receive you do not or not hear your words, then depart out of their house of that city, shake the dust off your feet. Verily I say unto you, it should be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment then for that city. And in Matthew 8, 12, it says, but the children of the kingdom will be cast into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto his centurion, go thy way and as thou hast believed, so let it be done to thee. Jonathan Edwards, the great preacher of old, preached a message called sinners in the hands of an angry God. And when he preached it, it is said, reported from the people there that people in the congregation literally screamed out because of the terror of God's judgment upon them. They said when some left, their finger marks were literally still in the pews because of the warning. Charles Haddon Spurgeon says, if the warning admonitions of God ministers fills the conscience with terror, what must it be to be faced with the Lord himself? If one bolt of judgment brings a man into a cold sweat, what will it be to stand before an angry God in the last day? Folks, God's love for us brings a lesson. And one of the greatest lessons is be, war be warned that there's a judgment day a coming. There is judgment coming for God's people or for all people. Secondly, love brings an offering. Under the Old Testament system, every worshiper had to bring his own lamb. If he had no lamb, he had to buy a lamb. He could not borrow a lamb. No one could give him a lamb. He had to provide his own lamb. But in the New Testament, everything changed. God provides the lamb of God, which is Christ himself. 
Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet-smelling savor. Christ himself became our offering. Folks, if there's anything I can leave with you, it's the message of love. And the message of love has a lesson in it. Yes, there's lessons we learn from each other. There's lessons we learn from pastors. But one of the greatest lessons Christ himself taught us was, be ready, because there's a judgment day coming. Be ready, because none of us can stand before the God and feel as though somehow we're self-righteous to be able to enter into his kingdom. He is holy, and mankind is not. And so his lesson then turns into an offering where Christ himself comes. Robert Coleman wrote a book, Written in Blood. He tells a story of a little boy who had a disease for two years and was able to conquer the disease and remain healthy. A few years later, his sister contracted the exact same disease. The only way for her to somehow pull through was for him to donate his blood, which was the same blood type as hers. And because he had already conquered the disease, it would somehow help her to conquer it faster. And so he was asked, will you give your blood to your sister? And the little boy trembled with his lip and said, for her I will. He went into the operating room and they hooked them both up. They were doing the trans transfusion and as the little boy's blood was coming out of his arm and the procedure was almost over, he looked to the doctor and he says, Doctor, he said, yes. He goes, when do I die? And then the doctor realized why the little boy's lip trembled. He realized that this little boy thought he had to give up his life to save his sister. And while that wasn't the case, it was the case for Christ. He gave not only his bud, but he gave his life that we might have redemption. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 through 12 says, By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. It's an Old Testament uh, terminology here. The priest stood there every day just offering upon offering upon offering. It says it never could take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. God. Folks, God's love for us gives us a lesson with a warning, and it gives us an offering that fully covers our sin. Thirdly, God's love is victorious. What death did to Jesus is nothing compared to what Jesus did to death. Do you like that? That's a great quote. James Hewitt wrote it, What death did to Jesus is nothing compared to what Jesus did to death. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you hath he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, has made us alive together with Christ, that at any time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of this promise, having no hope, Hope and without God in this world, but now we have hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. I'm going to invite you to stand again as we read this passage. Stand with me just so you don't fall asleep and you have a little bit of movement here. When it gets to the bold part, you can read along with me. It'll be on the screen. Are you ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible but must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labors are not in vain in the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. 
In June 18, 1815, at the Battle of Waterloo, the French under the command of Napoleon and the British, the Dutch and the Germans under the command of Wellington were in battle. And in England, they were dependent upon the semaphore signals to get news from the war. And across the signals came the signs. Wellington defeated. And then the fog rolled in. And everybody was sad. They had lost the war. A few hours later, the fog began to dissipate. The message came in through again. Wellington defeated the enemy. They had won the war. When Jesus gave his life on the cross, he went to the grave. And when he went to the grave, many thought he was defeated. And for three days they mourned. But then the third day came and Christ himself brought the victory. There are many times in our lives we mourn for one thing or another. But remember this, Christ alone sits on the throne and he brings the victory. I've read the end of the book. I've read the end of the book. And we win. Simple as that. Love. Love offers us lessons. Love is, brings us an offering. Love allows us to have victory. And love lasts for eternity. Most of you could probably see it coming. John chapter 3, verse 15. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. A 90-year-old woman who wasn't doing very well went into the hospital and her son went in with her. And he tried to comfort her. He says, Mom, he says, it won't be too long and you'll be home. She said, yes, I know, son. I'm just not sure which home I'm going to. John chapter 6 and verse 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life. What do you think eternal life is like? I often wonder, we talk about golden streets in heaven, we talk about gems and rhinestones being on the gates. What do you think eternity is like? One individual described it this way. He said that if there was a long-off place... Somewhere in the north, maybe Canada, who knows. If there was a stone there that was 100 miles long and 100 miles high and 100 miles wide, and once a, every thousand years, a little bird would go and sharpen his beak on the stone. When the stone had disappeared, one day of eternity will have passed. <laughs> wow, put that around your head and think about it for a while. Eternity. Love brings us an eternal destiny. Nothing can take it away. Folks, I understand the pain of change and loss. And I can tell you that I see your faces. And I know that each of us will have somewhat of a struggle saying goodbye to one another for a while. But I can also tell you this. It's not forever if you know Christ. And one day we'll spend eternity in glory together. And what a joy that will be. God's love is the kind of love that does that. It, it enables us to be able to have that kind of confidence. Remember God's words of love because they give us the lesson of the coming judgment. Don't wait on that. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And if you've never put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you, don't wait. The judgment of God comes. We don't know if he's going to come back today, tomorrow, or sometime next week. We don't know if your life will be snuffed out today, tomorrow, or sometime in the future. But we know this. We will all depart from this earth. Don't wait. If God's speaking to your heart in some way, come to Christ. He's paid your penalty already. He was the offering. He gives victory over sin, death, and the grave. Simply put your faith and trust in Him and come to faith in Him. Remember God's words of offering. 
He has given us the very best and he has offered himself for us. Remember his words of victory over sin, death, and the grave. Don't allow anything to come into your life that will defeat you in some way. We have the victory. I was sitting here this morning. I flipped over my cover, my my new cover on my Bible because the old one was tore up and I read it says, haven't I commanded you? Be strong and a good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God goes with you anywhere you go. Folks, he's already given us the victory. We'll never walk alone. Remember, God's words are forever. Forever. They're eternal. And we're all called to emulate Christ, aren't we? And I believe that you've demonstrated to me the same kind of love that Christ asks or gives to us. You've taught me many lessons in the last four years by your love to me and to our family. You've taught us how to be gracious, forgiving, how to be giving and encouraging. You've taught us patience and prayer and faithfulness. Some of you have been saved longer than I've been alive. (laughs) You've taught us faithfulness. You've offered yourselves in ways of service. You've offered and sacrificed things that you would have liked to have and gave instead to a cause that the church was working towards. You've taught us by your love lessons and offerings. You've demonstrated victory through your persistence, through your sense of who you are and the fact that this church has stood for almost 142 years and to God's glory may stand longer than that. And remember, God's church is always his people. And you have taught us to keep the end in sight. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. It's my desire that over the past four years, maybe you've learned a little bit of how God's worked love in my life toward you. So the lessons that I sought to leave while I was here was authenticity, transparency, and a passion for Jesus. My offering has been my service and my prayers for you and your families, my devotion towards wanting the very best for each of you. The victory I proclaim is that Jesus is alive and he lives in me. And the eternal promises we hold on to is that you are my forever family. Never going to change. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. And where there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But love never fails. Let me just give you a little paraphrase for that. Ready? Where there are prophecies and preachers, they will fail. Where there are churches and congregations, they will cease. These things will not last forever, but love never fails. We love you all. Would you stand with us?
forgives us for our sin and makes us right with you through the person of Jesus Christ. And you give us power through the Holy Spirit to live as we ought to live. 
to demonstrate the virtues of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and long-suffering and forgiveness and gentleness and meekness. And Father, we ask that you might make us those kinds of people so that others may see the difference in us and long to have what we have in the person of Jesus Christ. I ask that your blessing might be upon this congregation and the leadership of it. That you might give them great wisdom. That you might lead them by the power of your hand and the strength of the Holy Spirit to guide them in the coming days. That you might allow each one of us to remember that Christ alone is on the throne of our life and he guides and directs. His ways are sovereign and we are but a vessel ready for his use. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for our time together and we praise you. And we look forward to the coming days when one day we'll spend eternity together with you and with our lovely sister Marianne and all those who've passed on before. before. Until that day, make us faithful to you, we pray. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Just a reminder that Rachel and I will be back for a celebration service on April the 28th. We hope you're able to make it to be able to join together one more time on April 28th. God bless. Sing with us.
Thank you. 